here just for fun right there because somebody gifted it to me and I love it. So I'm gonna do a quick little background we uh, wearing, uh, using some green and a little bit of white. Y'all know I love my white. So I'm just gonna squirt. And we'll get this dried up paint bugs off the front first. And we'll add a little bit of white. I'm gonna brush that in with a brush. Good. So if you don't, I don't know how to tell you if you don't have sound, because if you don't have sound, you can't hear me tell you anyway. <laughs> so that was a moot point. So I'm gonna brush on a little bit of white because I don't want, and as usual, I have too much, because I don't want the green to be stark green. I want it to be blendy. Do y'all know what blendy is? <laughs> I think that's an artist term. A little blendy. Thank you, Johnny. Let's see. Had some little nuggets here and there. Let me get rid of those. So now I'm gonna take my green, which is just a light apple green. And yes, canvases are on sale for 70% off at Michael's at Hobby Lobby. Um, modeling paste is on sale if you buy the Masters Touch brand. Canvases are on sale at Hobby Lobby if you buy the Masters Touch brand. Seed beads are on sale at Hobby Lobby if you buy bead treasures. And you have links to all of that stuff in the supply list for the Christmas tree challenge. So I'm just spreading this green around, trying not to get paint on my brand new shirt. Just bought this. And let me wipe some of that off. Just trying to make a little bit of a fun background. Hey, Branson. So, anywho, we're gonna make this and then I promise if you hang out to the end, I'll try to answer any questions you guys might have about the challenge or anything else that you might have questions about. So hang with me. This shouldn't take too ter terrible long. Hey, Glenda, come on, we'll be here. I'm gonna dry this with my heat gun so that we can just keep on keeping on. Thank you guys for sprinkling and letting everybody know we're here. Thank you for the stars, Tammy. And if you sent me stars and I missed that because I was painting or the words were going by too fast, I apologize. Uh, I do appreciate every one of you. We get this dry and we can move right along. I think that's it. Let me get that one little spot. Hey, Canada. Hey, Arkansas. All right, now we're gonna let that cool off just for a few seconds. And then we are going to do our tracing. You are, thank you, Irene, you're too sweet. We're going to use graphite paper and our tracer and a stylus. If you don't have a stylus, um, you can use a ballpoint pen. Don't worry about that, okay? I know, girls, I know. Whew, I know, but there's, you know, there's, uh, sometimes it just bees what it bees. Okay, I'm trying to see if I can move this up a little. The air is blowing straight on me, but I'll cool off my canvas faster, right? So I am going to set this on here. I want to kind of center it. Oh, I see I'm off the page a little, but that's okay. We'll end that little, we'll, we'll end that before it goes off the page. I want to kind of get it nice and centered. 
So that looks about right. And I'm gonna use just a couple of pieces of tape to tape it down so it doesn't wiggle wiggle. Oops, like that, while we trace. So I'm just gonna put that on there. And then we can slip the graphite paper under. And then we'll trace our leaves. We're gonna do some fun stuff in the middle of these leaves. So I'm just gonna be loosey goosey. I'm not gonna try to be perfect about this. And I'm just gonna trace my leaves right on to my canvas. I'm not gonna trace my little um, stem or stick or whatever you wanna call this because I'm gonna use vitrograph. So I'll show you that in a bit. I'm just not gonna do it. If you're gonna paint yours own instead of using the glass, you can totally just trace that right on. So let's get, that's my th third leaf. Not gonna trace that. This one. Being very loose about tracing this because it doesn't have to be perfect. It is a leaf after all. And voila. Now before I take my tape off, I'm gonna take a peek. And voila, it is transferred to my canvas. And it looks like I probably need some new graphite paper because it's very faded, but that's okay. I can do it. We can do it. Now these fall leaves, as you can see, are very colorful. So we're gonna be using a couple of different colors in our leaves. Okay, we're going to be using some cherry red. We're gonna be using burnt orange, a little bit of, what is that, gilded oak, which is kind of a dark mustard color. We have a darker green, it's actually kind of a mid-tone, it's called crocodile, and we have brown umber, okay? So we're gonna be using all of those colors to kind of create our leafy leaf leaves. Okay, Gina. And so I'm gonna just tape this up right chill. And we are gonna go ahead and get started. And we're gonna use the brown on the stems too. We're gonna to add a little bit of glass in the middle, some acorns, some fun stuff. Thank you, Charlotte. And let's get to painting, what do you say? I'm gonna go ahead and just put all of these on my plate. Let me shake this sucker up. This one is trying to run out but that's kind of a rusty red, you can see that. Then we're gonna do a true red. Let me get that off. Ugh. A true red, this is cherry. And the mustard color. Hey everybody, welcome. We're gonna do something super fun. Taking a break from pumpkins. I don't know why, I love my pumpkins. Let's get some green. And we're gonna do another green. And we're gonna put a little bit of brown. We don't need much, just a smidgy. Oh, that's terribly runny. I need to shake that up more. Give me one second. It's like all the liquids on top. Ooh. Uh, let's try that. That's much better. Okay, so those are our paint colors. We have a burnt orange, a red, a yellow, two greens, and a brown, and we are literally gonna be doing blendy things. So let me grab the proper brush for blendy things. I'm gonna grab two brushes. Oh, So uh, I just grabbed two angled brushes. It doesn't really matter, just 
uh, whatever brush you're comfortable with and we are going to just blend colors together until we like the way our leaves look, okay? So I'm going to start, I think I'm gonna start with my lightest colors and actually have some water so I can rinse as needed and paper towel, okay? So let's go ahead and just get started. I'm gonna start with um, a little bit of the yellow. I need to get some water on my brush to start if we're gonna be blendy. And a little bit of the yellow, mustardy color. And I'm just gonna come in and add, I wanna make sure you cover your tracer lines. You don't want those showing through your end result. All right, there's something in my brush. Now I think I'm gonna go to just a tiny bit of green. So I'm gonna be going back and forth between all these colors, just kind of blending as I go. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of the brick red color, burnt orange, dark, dark orange, whatever you wanna call it. It's kind of a bricky color. So I think I'm gonna do that entire front part of that leaf and then we'll blend. I lost my tracer line because it was, I guess, a little faint. So I'm ad-libbing right now. So we'll get a little bit more of that. And again, if you're asking questions and I can't see them because I'm painting, um, I promise I will come back and look at that. So we're gonna add a little bit of green on this side. And I'm just gonna pounce a little to blend my colors together so they are kind of an ombre seamless blend. We don't want them to just be, um, oh, a, a, like a perfect line. Oh, that's green, that's, we want them to blend. All right, let's do a little bit more of this green blended in. And I'm gonna turn that, this that way. I don't guess it really matters how you see it. I'm gonna do a little bit of this darker red, or brighter, I guess. It's not really darker, it's brighter. And that, you notice I have not even um, cleaned my paintbrush yet. I'm allowing all these colors to just mix together on my paintbrush. All I'm doing is rubbing off excess, all right? So I'm gonna go into my green again and just pounce in Now I'm gonna go into that rusty color, the brick, and where the uh, cherry red is, the bright red, I'm gonna pounce out and blend in to my other colors. Okay, so basically go get a leaf out of your yard and kind of replicate those colors into, just pull those colors out of your palette, just put those on your, um, table and then you have a cute little fall leaf. Just keep pouncing. Uh, they start to look a little muddy if you're blending. Uh, like the red and green on top of each other can end up looking a little bit muddy. So just let it dry for a second and then you can come back and add a little more layers on top of that. All right, so I'm gonna rinse. I'm gonna get a little bit of that darker green, pounce where I just made a mess. And we're gonna move on to our next leaf. I am going to get a tiny bit of white. I have white over here on my little card. And I'm gonna just put a tiny bit of that white along one edge of my leaf, just to give it a little bit of dimension. So I have, I have white here where I just kind of rubbed off my brush when I had too much. So just add a little bit of white. 
And that's gonna get brighten up your leaf and give it a little bit of dimension, all right? So I'm gonna rinse and we're gonna do the same thing all over. Hey, Elizabeth. We're gonna do the same thing, but we're going to, uh, what we're gonna do is, let me see is make each one a little different, okay? So on this particular one, I think I want a, a little smaller, a little bit of a smaller brush. Oh, Donna, I feel you. And I am gonna go in with my darker green. This brush is icky, I think, maybe not. I'm gonna start with my darker green and I'm gonna go into this leaf right here and put down a little layer of that dark green just on that bottom edge. This leaf is kind of turned in on itself. So it's kind of turned itself into a, like a little cup. So I'm going to start with that offload and then I'm going to grab up some of the lighter green and just kind of blend in. A little bit of that lighter green. Offload that and I'm gonna go into my yellow and I'm gonna bring that out to, this brush is terrible, hang on. The brush is not a happy brush. Let's find this one. That is probably a brush I left sitting in my water for three days. So we are take the yellow, we'll outline our leaf, and then we'll come back in and just kind of blend it into that green. Bring it in. Then I'm gonna take offload then I'm going to take that lighter green again and blend it back up into that yellow a little just so that it is blended well. I'm having a terrible time with this leaf. All right. So on the underside of this leaf, we're going to do whoop, we're going to do a little more of that rusty color on the bottom side of that leaf. So I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna actually start with the brighter red, the cherry red color. And I'm gonna get some of that water out of my brush. And I'm gonna come up and just follow that tracer line. This is almost like coloring in a coloring book with paint. Follow that line. Fill that in. Make a nice smooth line. I'm gonna rinse that off. I'm gonna come in with that burnt orange color. And we're gonna blend some of that in to that red. forgetting to rinse my brush. I need to get some of that off, hang on. I make boo-boos too. I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown and right on the top edge of that leaf, I'm gonna add that brown. I may need to let that dry for a few minutes. It's a little too wet. So I think we're gonna let, let it dry and we'll come back and do a last little thing. So I'm just gonna keep doing my leaves and I'm gonna turn as I go so I'm not putting my hand in the leaf. So let's see, this one I think we'll do, let's do, let's start with the yellow and just kind of fill in the center. And then we'll do our edges in some warm colors. Just fill that center in quite nicely. I'm going to grab up a little bit of the darker green and we'll come around. I 
I'm going to blend that in to my yellow. Don't worry about it too much till you get the entire leaf covered and then you can do your little detail work. So I'm going to come, I'm going to go into another color. I'm just going to change colors back and forth and back and forth and back and then forth again. A little bit of that yellow, blend it in, just brush over it. That's This is why we do one leaf at a time, so that all the paints are dry. And mine are drying really fast because the air conditioner vent is still blowing directly on my table. So I'm having to fight that fight, but uh, we're going to work with it. I'm going to turn this way and I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt orange or red brick, whatever you want to call it on this side. And just keep, oops, that was the cherry red. That's all right, we'll use it. So basically grab up your paint colors that are fall colors, your oranges, your mustard yellows, your greens, all those fun fall colors. Just start blending them together to make leaves. Leaves, leaves, leaves. <laughs> Why do I always battle that? All right, so I'm gonna grab up a little more yellow while that red is wet. And we're gonna blend that in again. I want that to blend in. I don't want, I want it to be seamless and not like um, a harsh transition. Does that make sense, guys? You want it to be blendy. Don't want it to be, oh, green, yellow, red. You want it to all blend into itself, into each other. So working wet on wet is your best Way to do that. Go grab a little bit of this yellow. We'll blend it into that wet green I just pushed on. We'll take a little bit of green over into our red. And there's another one. I need to straighten up this line a little that I have on this edge. But other than that, this one's done. All right, so let's keep going. We have two more to go. And then the fun stuff starts. <laughs> then it's all fun and games. So let's do, um, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start with this green. Not I'm going to cover almost all of my leaf with this medium green. This canvas is being a little extra. It's one of those bumpier ones and it's not wanting to cooperate. So I've got this whole left side of this leaf uh, done in that green. I'm gonna offload some of that and we'll grab up that Mustardy color. We're going to blend in to the green that we already did. And then we're going to create that yellow on the other side. Gold, yellow, whatever you want to call it. I'm trying to keep small amounts of paint on my brush so it's not overpowering anything. All right, so let's go. I'm gonna grab a little bit of green because I got out of line. All right, now I'm gonna grab just a little bit of this darker green on the tips of my bristles. And I'm gonna just come around 
the outer edge where that green's wet still and just add a tiny bit of that darker green because I if you follow me, you know I like blendy colors. I don't like anything to be just one solid color. So on this, on the yellow, I'm gonna do the brick color. Just a tiny bit here and there. And then we'll blend it in to the yellow. And then we have one more to go. I'm actually gonna grab a little bit more of that white again that is on my other little plates. And I'm gonna put a little bit of white in a couple of spots here and there on these leaves. All right, one more to go. And then we get to do the good stuff. All right, so this one, let's do, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start, I don't know. I feel like we got a lot of red, um, but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start with the burnt orange or red brick, whatever you wanna call it. On this side. We'll do this whole left side with this color. I'm totally not staying in the lines, guys, because mostly because psychologically I just can't. It's like color outside the lines, color outside the lines. Don't stay. So now I'm gonna rinse that a little because that red's strong. I'm gonna go in to my orange or yellow, not orange. Go into my yellow. It's going to make a little bit of an orange color. Let's go around that little leaf part. And I'm just going to pounce where the two colors meet. And I'm going to bring some of that red into my yellow. And I'm going to take some of that yellow into my red. Grab a little bit more yellow. And then I think we're gonna do a tiny bit of green. Let's rinse that. Y'all like this so far? Am I doing a good job? <laughs> hey, Desiree. So I'm gonna start with the lighter green. I'm just gonna kind of fill in that little section of leaf. Then I'm gonna just pounce it into the yellow. Just get a little bit here. And just pounce it in a few places. Don't be afraid to mix the colors up. Red and green, not so much. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of white off this piece of paper. We'll do that again. And I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of white in a couple of spots. And I'm pretty happy with that. Let's make some stems. So I'm gonna grab a liner brush, which is a pointy brush like this, just a small round brush. And I'm gonna add some stems with my brown. I'm gonna go into my brown and I'm just gonna roll. See how I'm just rolling my brush into that brown to saturate those bristles really nicely. And then I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna press down. And as I get closer to the leaf, I'm gonna pull up so that my line is thinner. Now some of this probably won't even show because we are adding stuff to the center, but I still like to do it anyway so it looks nice. So if there's anything peeking through, it'll at least look good. 
And you might see it, if you're painting it yourself, you might say, eh, I think I'm not gonna put glass on that. So there's always that option. So we have a little bit of a, and there. Now we're gonna do the magic. I'm gonna hit this real quick with my air, with my heat gun, just to get it good and dry. Then we're gonna do our details. Then we're gonna make pretty. The details are the fun stuff. This is a graphic marker. This comes from Hobby Lobby, okay? It's a Master's Touch brand, uh, which is a Hobby Lobby brand, and this is in the art department. It's called a graphic 0 0.5 needle drawing pen, and this is what I like to use to add tiny little line work and details to my pieces. So here's how I like to do it. Short, quick strokes, little burst of black lines. We're not outlining it like perfectly. We're just going to make some quick strokes inside the line, outside the line. Let's make a little uh, what do you call that in the middle of the leaf, the little bone, the little center of the leaf? That's all we're doing. Don't try to be perfect. It looks better if it is a little sloppy. Does that make sense? All right, so let's do this one there. Just make our lines. We'll do a little line in the center. All right, this one is bent over, so we'll do that. And then we'll come back and do that part. And you're gonna see in just a second what a difference just this little bit of line work makes. I'm going to leave this one undone and then I'm going to show you the two. Okay, here are two leaves. This one is done with lines. This one has the little bits of line work. This one does not. Do you see what a difference that makes? This one's pretty but it's kind of bland and boring, so eh, it vain, yeah, a vain. <laughs> when I'm, uh, I could, I could have told, I could have said that, I could have told you that if I wasn't live. But sometimes when I'm live, my brain doesn't work as well as it should. That's just the nature of the beast. Okay, so all our line work is done. This is also, if you look it up on Hobby Lobby, do a search for illustration pen because I think they call it that as well. All right, I gotta get my drink, y'all, because my mouth is so dry, I'm about to spit sand. I don't even know what I did with my drink. I lost it. I lost my drink. One second. My mouth is so dry, I can hardly formulate a sentence. Okay guys, now I want to show you our options for what we're going to do with the center. Look how pretty. Isn't that cute? Fall and not a pumpkin. Okay, so here are our options. I already pulled out a couple of pieces of vitrograph. Um, I'm going to decide which ones I want to use. This one's got a super fat end. But I think if we put it in, oh, that one hangs off really good too. I think that if we put it in like, right, like that, it'll be okay. And then maybe one like that. And this one sticks up off the canvas. So I really, really, really like that. And let's see, maybe there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is grab some glue 
And I wanna just put a dot of glue right in the middle just to kind of hold these in place while I do my other stuff. All right, I don't mind that hanging off the edge either. I kind of like it. So I just want those to stay in place while I do other things, other things. Okay, so my iPad's about to fall off again. I don't know why it does that. So we'll put this away. Now what I have, I have acorns. I wanna show you what I have available. I have these cute acorns that are kinda rusty red and coppery colored. And they also, Cheryl, have a senior citizen's discount, which I am proud to say I can have. So these are also some little mini pine cones. We may use some of that. And I also have some of the clear frosty sea beets. And I have clear glass and I have green glass, but I think I'm gonna use the green. So let's try some green right in the middle. It's called, the uh, Pat, the glue is called Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue. So I'm just gonna get a tiny handful of glass. This is a green reflective. April, those come from Etsy, it's called Vitrograph. And I am going to just drop that. I don't mind it covering up my, some of my leaf leaves. I'm gonna just drop it in the middle. It's covering up the seam of my little glass pieces. And we'll add some other things along the way too. So, oh my goodness, I just threw glass all over the place. Just three glass. So you see, it only took a tiny, tiny handful of that green to make that work. Okay, so now I have these acorns. They're actually a little bit big for these tiny leaves, but let me see if there's a smaller one in the bunch. They all look to be about the same size. So you guys tell me, do we do, I'll, now, we'll, I'll do this and then you guys can vote. Do we do three little mini acorns, or acorns, three little mini pine cones, and then sprinkle some frost and some bubbles for that? Let me show you. So that would be the pine cones. And option two is the little bit oversized acorns. We could just do one, we could do two, we could do three. I don't know, they look a little big to me. I should have done bigger leaves. Let's try with just one on there. And see, maybe one acorn and a couple of pine cones. Let me think we should do a mix. Let's try it. Let's see, I'm gonna scooch that over because it's interrupting my pine, my little acorn. Maybe like this. All right, I'm looking for direction, y'all. What do we, oh, I kinda like that. What do you think? One acorn and two pine cones? Ah, nobody's talking to me. <laughs> I think that's the ticket. I'm gonna do, Two little baby pine corns and pine cones and one acorn because I think that looks super cute. Now, here's what I'm gonna do though. I'm gonna take these off. I'm gonna resin all of that. Then we're gonna put them back in because I don't wanna saturate these with um, resin. And let me get my little, Thing, my, my thing, my uh, riser, and I'm literally going to mix an ounce of resin. I think that will suffice. Well, I think I might mix more than that because I have like 10 crosses. That looks super cute, don't it? That with just the um, one. 
Well, I'm not trying to be realistic, y'all. Not trying to make realistic art. I'm just trying to make something cute. All right, so glove up and let's pour some resin. Oh, I need to mark on my cup. Let's, I'm gonna do a full ounce. That'll be plenty and that'll give me enough to do that one, at least one cross probably. So a half an ounce of resin and a half an ounce of hardener should suffice. All right, so let's go ahead and pour that up and then mix it. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> this is like a pile of leaves on the ground with pine cones and acorns just laying there. That's right. That is right, April. That is 100% right. I'm not trying to be do a uh, realistic stuff here. We're just playing around. So I'm gonna pour some hardener in one cup, a half an ounce. And these colors are gonna really, really, really pop once we get this resin on. So let's do a half an ounce of hardener. And, oh my, my bottles are so nasty, y'all really need to toss them and start again. Uh, Tamara, I'm using Art Resin. Give me one second and I'll show you the label. It's a two-part resin. It's made here in the United States. Hang on, I gotta hold my mouth right while I do this. It's made in the U.S. And this bottle is so nasty, I'm afraid to show it to you. So it's made in the United States and it's called Art Resin. It's got a little heart in it. And it has no VOCs, no COVs, no BPA, and it is made specifically for art projects. And they have a website. You can order it at artresin.com or Amazon, or they also sell it at the Hobbly Lobbly. You can find it there as well. So let me get a cup. This cup has a hole in it. That probably would not be appropriate. I need you to just throw that away. I think I will right now before I pour something in it. So I'm gonna take my two parts. Yes, Tracy, mine are nasty. I'm gonna take my two parts and I'm gonna dump them into one cup. Now, if you're new at mixing resin, you need to use two cups. One cup to pour your hardener, one cup to pour your resin so that you make sure you're insured that you have an accurate measurement because it's a 50 50 mix and if you get it off too much it won't dry you'll just have a ooey gooey mess so uh, measure in two cups then pour both of those in to one so i'm going to scrape all that goodness in to my cup let's see i'm going to use my plastic tool to to mix, which is this bad boy. This is actually, I love that Desiree. I think I saw that. Um, this is a makeup applicator. You can get these at the dollar store. You can get them at Amazon, anywhere that sells makeup. It's literally a makeup applicator. And we use this to mix our resin because you can just peel the dried resin right off of it. You can wipe it off with a paper towel, with a baby wipe, something like that. And it's super duper cost effective. They're like a buck or something. So now we are going to mix this for three minutes. We have to stir lightly, don't beat it to death. Just stir and blend and scrape and blend for three minutes. And while I'm mixing this, uh, if anybody has any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to answer any questions while I'm stirring and mixing. All right. Uh, Diane, I'm assuming you are asking about the hardener. The, uh, the resin is a two-part kit. Uh, you get the resin and the hardener in one package. 
I'm sorry, G. Post your link. I, I say that all the time. You should call me out every time. G. Willikers, right here on this page, sells the best wipes ever. They're not baby wipes. They're mixed media wipes. And her website, she is about to post that because they are the best for resin and paint cleanup on the market. And if I'm not, if I'm saying this wrong, let me know. But these are organic, right? And uh, made in America, right? <laughs> Uh, you can get glass at artshattered.com. That is my website. <laughs> I know, gee, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. Art Resin is food safe. You can read all about Art Resin on their website at artresin.com. They have an entire FAQ section. So you can go there and read all the bits about that. It's gonna be fun, Debbie, and you're gonna be addicted. Uh, Donna, I only do the uh, lock classes with kids twice a year because it is exhausting trying to put together five, six, seven, eight hundred kits, and uh, no good deed goes unpunished either. <laughs> so we only do that twice a year. Let's see. Compostable, 100% American made. Post your link, G. Punish me. Whoop me. I do not wash the little cups. What you need to do is take one of G's wipes and wipe the little cup out with the wipe. I'll, I'll give you a little, well, I got to stir. Sorry. So just wipe it out. You can use uh, one of those little wipes and wipe it out and then you can reuse those until they get so icky that you can't use it anymore. My website, oh, uh, you're talking about Gina's website. Post your page, Gina. <laughs> She's never gonna let me live that down. I promise you that. Can you see this? Can you see the words here? This is her Facebook page. It's called, it's B-E-I-R-T-M-H-A-C. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but I always say Bert Mac. So if I'm saying that wrong, I apologize, but these are fantastic, okay? I'm giving you the plug, girl. Don't hit me. Don't beat me up. So that's what you're looking for, that Facebook page. So I'm mixing, Catherine, I promise, I'm mixing. <laughs> Gina's going to kill me. I'm going to have to, like, give her the biggest plug ever. She's going to make me pay for that. Yes, do not. If you're using a resin to create your art, please read. No matter what I tell you about how to do this or how to do that, please read the manufacturer directions on the back of your resin. Please dispose of resin properly. Please clean your tools properly. Please, please, please. Um, oh, that's cool, Gina. Please um, don't don't just pour this down your sink. You're gonna be so sorry if you do. And then you're gonna be mad at me, and I'm gonna just be like, eh. absolutely, Dab. It will work. Thank you, Catherine. I'm just stirring away. Okay, don't be scared, Diane. It's easy peasy. And it's just res it's just art, right? You don't have to be scared. Nothing to be scared of. Just mix carefully, measure carefully, mix carefully. Make sure your surface is covered and protected and go for it. You are going to love it. Diaper whites. I promise not to call them that. I promise I will never say that again. I have been called out. So I'm starting with my center where all the glass is piled up. And I'm just drizzling that resin over my glass. Make sure it's nice and covered. Yep. 
Yes, do read labels. Guys, come on. Got to use some common sense here. So I'm going to go all the way to the end, as far as I can anyway, on this little glass stringer and make sure that's covered nicely because it's gonna help it be a little stronger so it doesn't break easily because they are a little bit fragile. And we're gonna do the same with this one. Just let that little snake. So now I'm going to just drizzle and pull out my resin all the way to the edges. All right, you wanna cover your entire canvas so I'm just going to use my little tool. You can use your gloved hand if it's easier and you feel like you have more control. So let me get a little bit more. And we did not even remotely use all this resin. So we're just spreading it out. I think I'm going to have to use my fingers. spread I'm gonna make sure I get that really good oops don't do it don't go down the side I don't like it all right now I'm gonna run my hand just along that edge I kind of feel like it probably doesn't but I kind of feel like maybe that it seals that edge and keeps things from dripping over the edges so now what I'm gonna do before I add my stuff back I'm gonna first pick out this little, whatever that is. Looks like some pepper. Get that off my little pointy stick. Lou, if you're here, I love this so much. And this is the best thing uh, anybody ever gave me. Okay, so I'm gonna hit this with my heat gun real quick, just to pop bubbles that occur when you mix things together. So I'm just gonna run that over. You know you're too close if your resin is moving. All right, so my entire canvas is covered and it has, uh, the bubbles are popped. So now I'm gonna take my cute little pine cone and there's some glue string on it and I'm gonna stick him back in here where he belongs. And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna cover him with resin. Just, I'm gonna try to get it just on the ready orange part so that there's not resin on the cap because it's gonna change the color of that little cap if you get resin on it. But I do want it to be secure. So just to make sure we're gonna run a little resin on there. Now, I don't want a lot of resin on these either. Uh, so I'm literally going to dip the tip of it in my cup or on my edge. I don't want to do that a lot because that leaves debris. And I'm going to add, I'm just going to stick them in. I'm going to make a little puddle, a little puddle of resin. And I'm going to stick it in that puddle just like that. Now, I'm gonna take these gloves off because I work better without them. I'm gonna show you this close up. That was me blowing in my glove, trying to get it off without ruining it. That was not me passing gas. <laughs> so now I want to take, I'm gonna take a little bit of bubbles. These I also sell on my website. They're just little acrylic bubbles. And I'm gonna throw a few of those. You know, Y'all know I love my bubbles. I'm gonna throw a few of those in the mix. Just like that. Because I love bubbles. And the last thing I'm gonna do is add some of this. This is on sale at Hobby Lobby right now. Bead treasures, these are called Crystal Luster. So I'm gonna put a few of these in a little cup. I 
but y'all talk them out. And I'm going to sprinkle it on my art piece around the glass and a little bit into my leaves as well. It kind of ends up looking like it's frost or something, a little bit of dew, a little bit of dew on the leaves that are on the ground, all gathered up. I'll pour some in the middle. And then when this is dry, you can just flip it upside down and whatever didn't stick will just fall right off. Let me pour these back in because these are like gold. Yeah, if you put resin, they're just going to get dark and, and it's really hard to get something that's got that much texture and layer. It's really hard to get it um, perfectly covered unless you just gob and gob and gob the uh, resin on. Now, since I have a little bit of resin left over, I'm going to pour it on something else. So it won't take me but a second. I'm going to scooch this over and I'm going to use my leftover resin to put on this cross. Then we can, oh, I put my gloves back on. Dag nabbit. And then we can answer any questions you might have about our, ugh. so check this out. This is so cute. I love it. It looks really cute and colorful and very full. They are Bee Treasures Seed Beads. And the color is called Crystal Luster. They are back in stock at Hobby Lobby. Oh, the C ones? Love them. I ordered 20. Sunday when they had free shipping. Isn't that cross pretty? I made a bunch of crosses for my store. Because it's tis the season. It's about to be Christmassy. So we are going to be making these in the store. And I have a little bit of pine cone on my brush. So I'm going to get that off. So I am going... This is probably not going to be enough, but I'm going to put, I don't want to waste it, so I am going to put what's left on this cross, then I'll let it dry, and then I'll re-resin it again when I have more resin. It's okay to partial resin something if you only resin in the glass bits. Now, you don't want to resin around the edges because then you have a seam where it's dried and then layered up again. But if you just resin the glass bits, then you don't have to worry about it. So I'm just resin, putting the resin on the cross itself because I didn't want to waste that resin. That stuff's not cheap. Voila. Okay, so now I'll just set that aside and let it dry as well. Isn't that pretty? Y'all like it? Pretty. Love it. I'm so glad to hear that, Debbie. So here is what we did tonight. Our fall leaves with our little acorn, our pine cones. So much fun to do that.